Polaris, RDCAT up to 2005 or the new 2012, and Skidoo. That offset can be adjusted with shims behind the secondary and with shims inside the clutch retaining bolt. And normal, uh, normally offset should be, um, well I can't say directly lined up because it depends on where you're at in the shift. We make a clutch alignment tool that set, helps you set that offset plus the, the manuals, the OEM manuals, sometimes they'll give you an offset measurement like for example 5 eighths. What they're measuring is they're putting a straight edge from the back of the clutch, they're coming to the secondary and there should be a gap of 5 eighths. So that's how they'll define offset. But in the end what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the belt exactly straight around both clutches while the shift to maintain proper or proper alignment during the shift. Okay. Same thing with alignment. If, there, if you've got twist in and out, that's got to be compensated for, especially since the motor is going to move a little bit under hard acceleration. Most manufacturers want about 20 thousandths worth of twist when the engine is sitting still and not under uh, acceleration, hard acceleration, so that when that motor, if the motor's sitting here and the clutch is here, that motor is going to twist this way. It's going to twist towards the clutch. So you actually probably want the motor to actually sit forward just a little bit on the left hand side so that it twists into alignment. The only time that that would not apply is if you're running a bunch of torque arms and push arms and the motor's not going to move. So you want it to start out in perfect alignment. Uh, belt tension. There's two or three contributing factors to belt tension and this has a huge effect on performance. The first is the belt to sheave clearance. We talked about that a little bit. Uh, on the shimming, you want 20 thousandths gap between the belt and the sheave. Well, I should say no more than 20 thousandths, no less than 12. Ideally 15 thousandths. So what that's going to do is just barely put a hair of gap so that as soon as you start to engage, you're going to contact that belt right away. Let's say you have 50 thousandths belt to sheave clearance, it's going to slam into the belt and that's automatically going to create an overshift. So it slams and then because it's got so much momentum, it tries to upshift too fast, it's got to compensate by coming back or it's going to pull the RPM down or it's just simply going to, sh it's going to slip the belt. So that belt to sheave clearance is pretty critical on Articat and Polaris. For a lot of times, the OEMs will come out of the factory with 70, 80, 90, 100 thousand belt to sheave clearance. M7s, all the M7s were that way. And they would slam, they would engage really hard. It, guys with the 2010 M8s know what I'm talking about. They engage pretty rough. Part of that is belt to sheave clearance. The other part is the spring they're using. And the O-rings on the, on the pins, those O-rings create a little bit of drag. The secondary belt deflection. You, it is possible to adjust the secondary clutch, the width, at an idle on how high that belt sits. Uh, the manual usually gives you a, a measurement. You press down on the belt in the middle between the two clutches and you hold a straight edge. And whatever the distance is, is your belt deflection. That's a good way to do it, but I find a better way to do it is actually lift the sled off the ground and start tightening the secondary, raising the belt until the track starts to try to spin. Now obviously you can't do it while the motor's running because if that thing's already spinning you're just going to chew yourself up. So you, you want to do it, you want to turn the motor off between every try, maybe tighten it up, close your panels back up and then rev through it and let it, you know, grab the brake a little bit and rev through it to get it worked in and then just let off. Don't, don't grab the brake, let off and let it come back down to engagement and see if that track is going to try to spin on you, okay? Ideally, what you want is the, is the track to just about to try to spin. I mean, you can kind of see it, it'll, the track will almost kind of hesitate and try to move. Once you drop it back down on the ground, there's going to be enough resistance, it's not going to try to move. But it's a very smooth engagement when you do it that way. Vice versa, if you try to drop that secondary, that belt into the secondary a long ways, you're costing yourself full shift out again, we just talked about that, your peak speed, but you're also making it so that it's got to go quite a ways before it's going to get that belt tight and give you maximum belt tension or belt squeeze. So if that belt deflection so, if the belt's so low in the secondary that you got a ton of belt deflection, that primary has to shift and, and push that belt to a higher gear quite a way before the belt becomes tight. You following me on that? 
So again, that, that, that dimension or, or that belt deflection, a lot of people kind of discredit how important it is, but if you're going for maximum belt life and maximum performance, that is a critical dimension or a critical adjustment, okay? All right, that's kind of the basis of, of what I wanted to cover as far as the general stuff. As a company, our job is to do. Our job is to find a setup that's going to work for the average rider in a general condition and be optimal for that condition. So I can't, at starting line, I can't create a clutch setup for you and how you ride exactly and expect it to work where he rides. You might be riding at 7,000 feet on a 154 and he's riding at 13 feet on a 162 and he's got 10% less horsepower. So we, that clutch setup has to be generalized. And I'll get guys that'll say, well, I bought so-and-so's clutch kit and it just didn't really work that well for me. Well, did you call those people and, and talk about what your specific needs are and what your conditions are? Everybody get a form. What we're gonna do with these forms, I should have said this at the beginning. If you fill that out and give that back to us, that's gonna enter you into a drawing for 40 bucks. This is our 40th year, so we're kinda of giving away $40 gift certificates to everybody as we can. So make sure I get all those back. Um, we may, e that also gives us your email address so that uh, if we have updates on things that are pertaining to you, you will get that update, okay? So we appreciate you guys being here. If you have any more questions, come see me, and we encourage you to come to the booth and ask and, and see all the parts we have.